The Democratic Republic of Congo's Electoral Commission says President Felix Tshisekedi is seeking re-election alongside 23 other candidates next Wednesday. They include Nobel Peace Prize winner Dennis Mukwege and the runner-up in the 2018 presidential election, Martin Fayulu. John Mukum Mbaku is a Brady Presidential Distinguished Professor of Economics and John S. Hinckley Fellow at Weber State University. He is also a non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C. In discussing the election with me, he says the opposition is strong but fragmented, greatly favoring the incumbent. I think that uh, the, the incumbent, uh, Felix, uh-huh. Yes, yeah, most Congolese are not very happy with his performance during the last uh, a few years, since 2018 when he became president. That election was considered unfair, and a lot of people uh, in Congo believe that uh, that election was stolen from uh, Martin Fayulu. The Catholic Church in Congo actually believed that um, Martin Fayulu was the one who won the election but that the the outgoing president, Joseph Kabila, had manipulated the process to bring in someone he could control from the background and continue to uh, influence power in uh, Congo, and that was uh, Felix. And so that is a problem that still continues to affect Felix today. How about the country's uh, economy, Professor? Couldn't that be a factor in the election? The Congolese economy has a lot of problems, and that is one thing that voters in 2023 are thinking about. I think for most Congolese, the main issue, especially for people who live in the urban areas, young people in the urban areas, is unemployment. The the unemployment rate is very high. Uh, Extreme poverty is a a significant problem. Then you have food inflation, which was exacerbated by the the war in uh, uh, Ukraine and also COVID. So these problems are going to be uh, serious issues for the incumbent uh, president. However, uh, during the last uh, couple of years, Mr. Sisekedi has uh, introduced universal free primary education, and many people in Congo look at that as something of a a great achievement on his part. In addition, he has uh, he's offering uh, free medical care, free health care, to women who deliver children in public hospitals, something that so those two things uh, work in his favor. Now the third thing that works in his favor is the fact that the opposition is quite divided. You have um, very strong opposition uh, candidates, and so what is going to happen is that those candidates might divide divide the vote and allow the incumbent to win. And so if the if the candidates this very strong candidate, this very strong opposition candidate, if they had uh, decide, sat together and decided to combine their efforts and put in just one candidate, I think that, that would have made the uh, elections very, very competitive. So you have Moise uh, Katumbi, who was the former governor of uh, Katanga province. During the time he was governor, he did a lot of good things there. He improved the economy significantly improved the tax collection system significantly and provided a lot of uh, economic development in that uh, region. In addition to that, he is the owner of uh, a football club that is very popular in uh, DRC. And so he is viewed very positively, not only in the province of Katanga, but also uh, throughout uh, the country. Then you have Martin Fayulu, who is uh, believed to have won the 2018 election. Uh, he is a former ExxonMobil executive, and um, you have uh, Dr. Dennis Mukwege, the 2018 Nobel Prize winner. He is well known for his humanitarian activities. Uh, he's done a lot of work in helping women uh, fight sexual violence, uh, in, uh, in, uh, especially in the eastern part of uh, Congo. There are 24 candidates in the field, including... Denis Mukwege, the Nobel Peace Prize winning gynecologist, as well as Martin Fayulu, uh, former the oil executive from whom the presidency was widely seen to have been stolen in 2018. There are 24 candidates, but it's a fragmented opposition. In cases like that, it greatly favors the incumbent. One more thing, Professor. Uh, An- mm-hmm. Anzuluni, uh, one of the uh, candidates, uh, Florbert Anzuluni, 
actually claims 15 of the candidates were created by the regime. Well, it is possible because this is a practice that is quite common in uh, many countries in Africa where the incumbent tries to divide the opposition by creating uh, non-viable opposition uh, candidates so that they could siphon votes away. And this is uh, a big problem in Congo where you don't have a second round of election, where the person who gets the majority of the votes, regardless of how much the majority is, even if it is under 50 percent, that person will go on to become president without a second round of votes. And so under those conditions, the fragmented opposition is very favorable to the incumbent. That was John Makum Mbaku, a Brady Presidential Distinguished Professor of Economics and John S. Hinckley Fellow at Weber State University, speaking with me from the U.S. state of Utah. Meanwhile, one of the main opposition candidates for Congo's presidential election next week, Moise Katumbi, suspended part of his campaign today after violent clashes at one of his election rallies. Live rounds were fired and several people were injured as Katumbi addressed supporters in the coastal town of Mwanda yesterday, marking an escalation in tensions ahead of the vote. Ethiopian police announced the arrest on Tuesday of a former minister accused of collaborating with Olomo Liberation Army. Tai Dendeya, former minister delegate for peace, had posted on his Facebook account on Monday a letter from Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed informing him of his ouster from the government. On Tuesday, the federal police issued a statement announcing the minister's arrest for collaborating with forces opposed to peace and who want to destroy Ethiopia. In the past, the minister has been a fervent supporter of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed but he had recently been critical of the government, particularly its economic policy and the ongoing violence in the Olomia region, which surrounds the capital Addis Ababa and is home to around a third of the 120 million inhabitants of Africa's second most populous country. In its statement published on Facebook, the police published photos of weapons, rebel flags, license plates and cell phones all found at the minister's home and all part of a plan to destabilize the country according to authorities. An Ola member who used three different identities was also found hiding in the minister's residence and was arrested, the police added. Classified as a terrorist organization by Addis Ababa, the Ola has been fighting the Ethiopian authorities since its split with the historic Olomo Liberation Front or LF in 2018 when the latter renounced armed struggle that year when current Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came to power. At the end of November, the government and the OLF blamed each other of the failure of a second round of talks in, in Tanzania. More than 50 civilians were killed in the attacks in the Olonia region in November, according to Ethiopian Human Rights Commission. The Olomo region is plagued by multifaceted violence, making the situation extremely confusing. Internal political struggles, territorial disputes and animosities between communities combined with the recent development of armed banditry. <laughs> 